I can't wait to open you up, dang it. Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag, my gal! Send me a kiss, my wife! Baby, my heart's on fire! The leader class figures for War for Cybertron Siege are turning up in stores now. The first two being Shockwave and this, Ultra Magnus. Introduced at the time of the 1986 animated movie, Ultra Magnus was supposedly Optimus Prime's number two. <laughs> Don't snicker, Pearson. Instead of a semi-trailer, Ultra Magnus became a car carrier. His Generation 1 toy featured an Optimus Prime core, painted white, and then strapped up with other pieces to make him an even bigger figure. It sounded good on paper, anyway. Though the animation model bore only a superficial resemblance to the figure itself. Open. It, open! The box is larger with heavier cardboard and you can see Ultra Magnus peeking cheekily out from inside as well as the accessories. His character art is off on this side panel and on the back there are several studio shots of Ultra Magnus in his various modes along with a blurb at the bottom commanding you to select an opponent. In this case, the leader Shockwave figure. Hasbro didn't care enough to write any bios, so let us open this box and review Ultra Magnus properly. <laughs> Out of box Siege leader Ultra Magnus comes with his instruction booklet. A red plastic gun with silver paint on top. A pair of matching gun accessories and another matching pair of missile launcher accessories. According to the manual, the WHAV-1000 missile launcher is a simulacrum blaster, meant for only shooting simulacrums. It has 14 muscles, 17 targeting scopes, and 9 mouse pointers. These guns are apparently magnetic inducer launchers, with 16 muscles. 12 targeting scopes, and 15 mouse pointers, while this gun is the stethoscopic detector. Detector? What the... Yeah. Anywho, it has 9 muscles, 16 targeting scopes, and 9 mouse pointers. And this is leader Ultra Magnus out of box. He is a Cybertronian-style car carrier truck, and he looks pretty darn boss. His deco is red, white, and blue. Yay, America! With silver highlights, the front of the truck is a sort of unique, inverted scoop dealio. Everything is nicely detailed with plenty of rigidness to add texture. And looking close, you can appreciate the effort they went through in sculpting and paint applications. The headlights actually look kind of like Gatling guns. He feels heavy and solid and holds together well. The panel sections may be a bit thin, but they don't feel particularly brittle. Just don't handle him roughly, and he should hold up fine. He rolls well enough on smooth surfaces, although most of the tires don't seem to touch the ground uniformly. The real issue is that as a car carrier, Ultra Magnus is kind of a failure. You can't put any cars in him. You can only kind of put them on the top if they're small enough and stack them. The interior is already full of his kibble. And while it does a nice job of hiding the robot bits, it means you can't put any cars in there except maybe a MicroMaster or two. But what you can load him up with are weapons. Lots of weapons. There are Battlemaster ports and pegs aplenty. And it doesn't take much to jam this one with as many weapons as you can fit. He is a carrier after all, so he may as well be carrying something awesome. As in Generation 1, Ultra Magnus can be separated from the car carrier. He has a minifigure attached. Simply pop open the sides of the carrier. You must untab them from these little hooks. Detach and pull up the red section from the top. Then slide the truck from the front of the carrier. When joining them together, reverse the directions. This section inside the truck jams into this little groove here. And this is the Ultra Magnus semi-truck portion. It is perhaps the weakest point, at least when separated from the carrier portions. From the front he still looks cool with that kind of cow catcher front section. With icy blue windows. 
but turning to the side or the back, and the illusion quickly vanishes. You can see his arms sticking out. There's a big old gap here where the legs plug together. Some of it was done that way on purpose to have something for the trailer bits to clamp onto. And they are disguised well enough when he is fully loaded, but by himself it seems a bit lazily contrived. The smokestacks are inverted rather than on the outside, which is also kind of weak. But he does still have lots of ports for plugging in battle masters and fire blast accessories. So you can at least load him up with additional weapons to try and disguise the semi-truck's weakness. You can also transform the semi-truck section into robot mode. To start, rotate the arms out from the back, separate the legs, and rotate those down on their ratchet joints. Give the waist rotation a 180 degree. Pop open the front of the truck and rotate out the head before rotating back and clamping it shut. You will see his spinal column sticking up from the back. Don't worry about it. Finish rotating the arms forwards and tab them into the sides. Rotate the arms downwards, then rotate the fists so that the peg holes are facing up. Take the entire front bumper section and slide it upwards. Then take the torso section and slide it back. It will click and lock into place. Flip out the robot heel spurs from the feet, and the transformation is complete. In mini robot mode, Ultra Magnus does a good job of looking like a old white painted Optimus Prime, right down to the Me Too head. His coloring is white and blue, mostly white with some translucent blue plastic thrown in. He is well detailed, and the paint applications, such as they are, are clean without any blatant spillage. His robot underpants look a little large on him, and the sliding truck grille work on the back kind of stands out, but otherwise, he's a solid figure on his own. He has plenty of ports and pegs to use with these separately sold battle masters and fire blasts, and he scales well with the other Voyager figures of this line. He may be a bit boxy and feel a little light, but it works for him. And I admit I kind of like this one better than the Universe version. There's just something oddly cool about seeing Optimus Prime all in white, like a cybernetic snowman. Ho 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 ho. But just because Ultra Magnus Mini is an insert to the larger Ultra Magnus, it doesn't mean that they skimped on his articulation. You can still rotate the head 360 degrees and waggle it back and forth. The shoulders will rotate 360 degrees and also include a separate hinge so that you can splay them outwards. Upper bicep swivel is included, and the elbow will bend 90 degrees. You can even spin the fists in their sockets a little bit. Despite all the kibble, there is a full waist rotation. There is a ratcheted dual hinge and ball socket on the hips, so that it will rotate backwards and forwards, and also splay inwards and out. This cleverly hidden mushroom peg does mean that you can rotate the thigh. The knee will bend 90 degrees. The rear heel spur will tilt forwards and backwards, and you can tilt the ankles left and right. One thing the feet won't do is tilt forwards or backwards, but the side-to-side -side pivot means that you can splay him out without him falling over. All these points of articulation mean that you can get excellent range of motion with your mini Ultra Magnus figure, making him kind of fun to fiddle around with all by himself. But wait, there's more! Even though this is not a combiner-specific line, you can still combine this mini Ultra Magnus with the car carrier section to form an even larger robot. There is some prep work. First, untab the arms from the sides, untab the back section and slide it forwards again. Push the bumper section back down, then untab the cab front, and rotate the head back inwards, and reclose. Fold back in the heel spurs, slide the rear section back in place, and reclamp the arms back to the sides. Tilt forward Ultra Magnus's underpants and rotate them until the blue section is facing forwards, and clamp it back in place. With Mini Ultra Magnus so prepared, you may now disassemble the trailer section. There's a lot of parts forming here, but in this case, the end result is worthwhile. You will see that these blue sections tab into these red sections, 
detached them from the sides and tilt them out. Inside the trailer you will see these two blue and white sections. Those tab into the back. Pull them out and set them aside. These blue sections also tab into the top. Unpeg those and pull them out. The entire rear section of the carrier untabs. You will see that this red section tabs into these parts here at the sides. When you are assembling the trailer, the tabs slide in like this. It's tricky, but if you hold them in place, all the tabs will go together nicely. Simply pull them apart to separate them. Take this red section, put that aside, and also the leg sections go aside as well. You may be baffled by all of this, but it actually comes together pretty instinctively. To transform these rear trailer sections into the shin sections, you may be tempted to try to wrap it all the way around, but don't. First fold in this end flap, hinge in the middle section, then when you lay it flat against the side, tilt this inward, and it will fold in an accordion and neatly. Peg these ridges into these two tabs at the sides, and voila, it's a shin. To change the roof section of the carrier into Ultra Magnus's body, fold this section inwards, take the rear section and fold it backwards. These sections on the red panel plug into the spinal column. Snap them on, and they'll hold in firmly. These red tabs plug into these grooves on the body, near the sides of the arms. And these blue tabs plug into these slots on the front of the body. You can see that the interior of these shin sections were pretty much made for these legs. Slide them in and they will peg neatly in place. Keep the grey fork sections of the shoulder parts folded outwards, then slide the blue section over the shoulder smokestacks. Once the shoulder section has been slid onto the shoulder so that this white tab is sticking out, fold up the grey panel and it will lock it in place. These blue forearm sections have one panel that folds out. On this slanted section you will see an interior peg, which corresponds to a hole on the forearm of the figure. Slide it on until it has pegged in, then close and tab the panel back together. And here is Ultra Magnus in his full leader size robot mode. He does look a lot like his old G1 self, with red, white, and blue but with Siege's now trademark grungy paint job. He's got his antenna head, his huge white shoulder stacks with missile launchers, and ridgy boxy shins. And of course, he's loaded with Battlemaster ports and pegs to plug in extra weapons and fire blast accessories. As this bigger robot is made by strapping him with all the parts forming pieces, he does have some areas that seem disproportional. Turn him to the side and you can see his big boxy bits just hanging off. Not to mention the front grille work of the truck. And the shins look thicker than ever from the sides. Turn him fully backwards and you wonder how he could even move at all. But all of that bulk does mean he has a nice solid feel and heft to him. Everything holds in place tightly and nothing appears ready to fall off. Strap him up with battle masters and he can look even heavier if you don't mind how goofy he looks. His three included gun accessories and missile launchers mean that he has plenty of fake firepower all by himself. You would think leader Ultra Magnus couldn't move much with all this armor on, and yet articulate he does. The top head will also rotate 360 degrees and waggle back and forth. The shoulders have a full 360 degree rotation and will even splay outwards on a separate hinge. The upper bicep swivel still works, and the elbow will still rotate 90 degrees. The fists will also still rotate in their sockets. Even with all this extra bulk, the waist rotation still works perfectly, and he maintains the hip articulation from the mini-robot mode. Even the knees will still bend to a fairly high degree until all this boxiness starts getting in the way. The feet still will not rotate forwards and backwards, but they were kind enough to supply a pivot to tilt in and out. And because the feet are so wide, it does mean that you can put him into all kinds of dynamic poses without the risk of him falling over. I confess that I was somewhat surprised that he could pose so well with all this stuff on. 
Oh, sorry, as comparison, here is Siege Leader Class Ultra Magnus next to Universe Voyager Ultra Magnus. Here is Siege Leader Ultra Magnus next to Transformers Animated Leader Ultra Magnus. And here is Siege Leader Ultra Magnus next to an Ultra Magnet. <laughs> Leader Ultra Magnus for the Siege line is an excellent figure, and in many ways I'm glad that I skipped the Titan's Return version in favor of this one. Positives are that everything feels solid and well-engineered. There is plenty of detailing. The paint and colors are bold but pleasing. The Battlemaster compatibility means there are numerous ways to customize and accessorize him in all his modes. The smaller figure fits well into the armor, and the larger figure that he forms as a result is solid and decently articulated in and of itself. And even though the carrier is in two different pieces, they lock together quite nicely. Negatives are that there is a lot of parts forming to do. The smaller figure's alt mode looks pretty lame without the carrier attached. The legs are so blocky in combined mode that it hampers his posability a bit. There's a permanent tilt to the ankles, and the car carrier mode won't actually carry any cars. But the good outweighs the bad, and this version of Ultra Magnus is as much of a must-have as Transformers Animated was. I give Siege Leader Ultra Magnus 9 out of 10 deaths. Don't be a hero, Optimus. It's not in your programming. What did you say? Sorry. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell more, and tell me I'm your own. Oh.